Hi there, today we're going to be looking at installing the Rightminder application on a brand new Android Wear watch. There's lots of videos out there on installing Android Wear for the first time, specifically Android Wear 2. So I'll very quickly take you through how to install it and to pair for the first time. You may want to scrub ahead to the actual part where I am talking about installing Rightminder, but let's start with the watch first off. So it literally is just a matter of tapping to begin using your language, it'll step you through what you need to do. And then on your phone, you need to open up the Android Wear application, which you should have downloaded anyway. Uh, I'm actually going to disconnect, I'll show you how to do this, disconnect the one that I had there previously. Just move that down there, I'm gonna, that'll come up later on as well. Let's go disconnect the LG. So if you are reinstalling from scratch, you want to, uh, let's go, so not disconnect, we want to go remove. Uh, Bluetooth disconnected, forget watch. So if you are reinstalling the watch from uh, a previous installation, you just want to start again, because that can happen. Sometimes you just need to start again. We need to go there, and we go to add new watch. Nice and easy. So you've seen that's come up and said that the LG Watch Style 1600 is there. It's going to connect up. Uh, now this can be a little bit tricky. Uh, sometimes you may find that you need to do this two or three times. It really depends on various different factors. And it will depend on your watch as well. So there we go, I'm going to go pair. Yep, connected. Now what happens then is that it will go away and check for some updates. And you basically just need to let it do that. You just need to let it tick through and do what it needs to do. Again, we have noticed that Android Wear isn't perfect. Uh, it, it is certainly uh, getting there. Um, but if you do need to disconnect the phone and disconnect the watch and restart, you may need to do that a couple of times. There's just there's so many variations in software. Uh, generally, it's fantastic. Uh, you know, there's there's no challenges with most of the time. But sometimes you may just find that you have a few challenges, and it's just better to start again. So here we go. We're just waiting for the updates to tick along. Fantastic, and we're back. So it is asking me to move my accounts over. So we'll do that. It will move your Google accounts over to the watch. And then what happens is that some of your settings may move across. Um, and here we go, let's go copy. Copy accounts again. It should probably ask me for a password at some point, so I'll just remove the phone so that I can enter that. Copying accounts. It may have also saved it. Like I say, here we go, it's a password, so let me just take that away and enter my password. And we're back. So there you go, so we're all set. So that is the phone paired with the watch. That didn't take too long. Uh, it was relatively easy. So you'll see that now we have uh, the watch and the phone. Now, again, little funny little things like the watch, it's still ticking away. Uh, it's moving the, the details over so it can see that the phone is connected to the watch or the watch is connected to the phone. But uh, there we go, and you're all set. So it is just a case of waiting sometimes, uh, just waiting for it to, to do its thing and, and get sorted. Now, what you'll probably need to do as a first time user with, uh, is to follow the instructions on what you need to do. Um, it's quite handy to do. I've done this one million times, uh, but it will keep bugging you to do it until you actually um, follow the instructions. So now we've got the watch paired. It's Android Wear 2.0. And what we need to now do is go and grab Rightminder from the store. So you may have already downloaded it, but what we'll do is that we'll go through and look in, there you go, it's already searching. We'll get that and install. You know, downloading, so what it's doing at the moment is it's pulling down the application and then it will go through and install. Now depending on your phone and internet speed and, and all the rest, it may take a little bit of time, it may take a lot of time. It's only 15 or so megabytes, so it's not massive. And we'll talk you through the setup process once it has done that, because there's a couple of different tricks and there's a reason why I've left that. You can see the TC uh, on the the screen there because there is a bit of a trick if you do use Facebook and it has these floating bubbles. Installing, doing its thing, waiting, waiting, waiting. 
So that's just ticking away in the background and doing what it needs to do and obviously showing us uh, what's happened. So then we can go open. Now that would have moved the application icon to your desktop. Now you can, or phone desktop. You can, I find it's easier to move it to down there so you've got nice easy access to it. So we just put some nice little screens in there of information that you can read. And then we go start. Now creating a new account is nice and easy. I won't take you through that, but there are some screens in there. I'm actually going to log in uh, as a as a different as my user uh, and then click login and take you through pairing the phone with the watch using Rightminder. So again just excuse me as I take that away. Let me add my information in there. And we're logging in. So when you log in it will actually ask you for some permissions. Now if you are uh, to ac accept some permissions rather, if you have this little floating icon up, you will need to get rid of it. Otherwise, Rightminder and any application that it asks for permissions when that's up, it's not a bug, but it's a, it's a difficulty. Uh, you'll need to drag that down to the X and get any on-screen notifications off the screen. So let's just tick through again, nice bit of information. And then it's going to ask you to allow various different things. Now this is basically so that we can track GPS and send SMS's and, and all that sort of stuff. So you just click through, nice and allow, nice and easy. Now on some watches you will also be asked um, that it's better and Rightminder will work better for fall detection if you enable either what's called ambient mode or always on. Uh, most for, uh, watches will actually put this on by default, but you can find it in the settings. And let's just go through and I'll show you on. Uh, oh, here we go. So when you actually install Rightminder for the first time, it's going to work out that the watch face which drives Rightminder is actually not installed. So it'll communicate with your watch and go, Oi, wait a minute. Now this can be a little bit tricky depending on uh, how long uh, what's installed on your watch. You can see there it's actually needing to install Google Play. So we'll do that and click down and it is downloading. Oh, it so there you go. So I've managed to swipe that away. This is, this, these, are the, these are the tricks. So you need to make sure that you've got the uh, Google Play installed on the watch so that right mind will work but let's click OK let's go and get it now depending on where you are in the process it's automatically going to open up right minder now you need to make sure that obviously Google Play is installing and we go yes if that notification disappears you can swipe down and find it, it can be a little bit tricky if you don't do that then right mind it will not work you'll see there here's an example of the install button missing. So this is exactly what I want to show you what I wanted to show you. So normally there would be an install button which would be on there, um, but because Google Play was installing and being a bit silly, it hasn't shown up. So what I'll do is I'll just exit out of this. This is good troubleshooting stuff for you to watch. I'll open up the application. Again, Rightminder's gone, wait, wait a minute, the watch face isn't installed. So let's go get it. And we'll open up that and again it's not there so what I'm actually going to do is I am going to restart the watch and hopefully that will trigger there's my restart restarts under system now it's just restart not disconnect and reset that will um, take us all the way back to zero <laughs> we don't want to do that so these are the little tricks that uh, Android Wear 2 throws uh, throws us as we go but at the end of the day, if you persevere, you'll be able to work it out. Sometimes it'll just work perfectly, and that's just software and, and all the rest. It doesn't, uh, doesn't necessarily follow too many rules when it comes to setting up different environments, different watches, different phones, but the principles are basically exactly the same. Let's just wait for that to come back to life. And what I might do is just go back to zero again so we can see it there and if we go back to Android where you'll see that it is just starting to connect. Now what we're wanting to do here is we're actually wanting to install the Rightminder watch face on the watch. Now if you don't have the Rightminder watch face on the watch working then Rightminder won't be able to work. 
it requires that uh, so that you can get to it nice and easy and it's a nice watch face it looks like a watch face looks like a watch and the whole idea of uh, Brightminder is to look like a watch and yet act as something so much more so we'll just wait for that to start up shouldn't take too much longer it's got some nice animations there we go Android where we are away now this is an LG style which uh, at the moment is on special for 169 US on Amazon, which is very cheap. All right, let's go back. Food Network's telling me they've done something. That's good, thanks. Uh, and Facebook Business, here you go. You're going to see all my, my updates. Now let's see if this does what it needs to do this time. You're getting a live demonstration. No, it hasn't. still hasn't done it, so that's all right. We will get there. Let's pull that down and see if there's any other notifications flicking around. So I have done that, I have done that. TechCrunch is ready, thank you very much, dinner idea. So that's just, there we go. So it's because Google Play hasn't done what it needed to do. So it was just a case of swiping down through those notifications. Swiping down through those notifications until we got to the one that was hanging. So we'll just wait for Google Play to install. Now, once Google Play has installed, then I am hoping that Rightminder will install. Let's just wait. Now you can keep the screen on just by touching it lightly. Um, although what we can do is I'll show you how to do the always on screen uh, in a minute. Two minutes left. It seems to be fluctuating between two minutes and one minute which is slightly frustrating, but again, this is, this is the, the, uh, the new world when it comes to, to smart chip watches. Once, once you're set up, it's fine. You can set and forget it. Uh, it's just sometimes, obviously, these sorts of uh, updates can cause us a bit of chaos, especially if you're new. So it's a good idea to do the setup from the perspective of uh, making sure that you've got someone around you who's a little bit technical um, who doesn't mind mucking around uh, they can do it you know uh, over an hour or so and then once you're, you're done you're done I'm not sure why that's actually doing that one minute left so we're just waiting for google play to finish its installation it seems to be jumping around a little bit all over the place but we'll let that do its thing two seconds left uh, it seems to have gone from 2 minutes to 2 seconds to 3 minutes to 55 seconds and all the rest. But you're basically better to just leave your watch sitting for probably 10 minutes or so just while various different updates are made to your watch. Uh, and then we're good. So there we've got new watch app. There we go. Get right under on your watch has popped up because um, it has actually done the installing of Google Play. We literally just hit install on there and it will install. Takes about um, anywhere from 20 seconds to a minute, depending on, again, various different factors. But you just leave your, I actually find it's easier when installing this sort of thing, just to actually take the watch off your wrist. Then you can leave it on the table for a little bit, walk away, go and do something, and then come back. And then once it's uh, back, otherwise you might get out of Wi-Fi range or any other sorts of uh, issues can happening. It can happen, rather. But once it's installed, it'll be nice and easy to get it all happening. So we'll just let that do its thing. So I'll move that down into there. There we go. And it has done its thing. So we go open. Now, when you hit open, we basically it will ask us to open. So you do that. And let's go there. And it's logged in. And it's given us that little one again. But it is now connected now you'll see on here that it says watch online and phone online what we actually need to do is to set the right mind watch face to be the default watch face so in uh, Android Wear 2 you can actually swipe between the watch faces so to select right minder we click on we swipe swipe across I select that one by mistake then we go add more watch faces down here we select right minder and there we go and we are connected you will also need to 
allow right mind to monitor your vital signs if you do have a heart detection thing it just does it automatically anyway even if uh, the LG style doesn't have one but it's best to allow that just to make things easier and there we go we have right minor installed now again like I said before you need to make sure that you have the watch face on at all times you can swipe over to other ones but if you're not on the right minor watch face it won't work there we go and as per normal you can go through and select the notification there and swipe away and back to the watch if you happen to remove the watch face like I said before, by mistake or whatever, because it is easier in Android Wear 2 to change your watch face. Just occasionally look over and if you see that the right mind watch face is not there, then you just swipe back over and go there. Now, what I was saying before about ambient mode and having or always on ready, the, the LG style actually uses battery really well and uh, you don't need to have the always on but if you did need to you're literally going through there i'll just go back so you're swiping down from the top selecting the little cog display you know, adjust the brightness and select always on screen now that is going to impact your battery life so with the lg style that means it will go to uh, be bright like that and then when you cover it well, after a while let's go cover oops the trials and tribulations to try to do this on a table there we go so it goes to that um, that thing but it, like I say I actually find that the style in particular you don't need to have that on at all and other watches are coming onto the market that are using their battery life really well you'll get a full day out of it with it like that and look at if you need to look at your time you just flick your wrist and it comes on so that's how to install it uh, I'm actually just going to try something else that may help. Let's open up that. So when you open up the application, uh, it works out that your watch is online and connected. If you don't have the watch face installed, let's open up that. It's going to recognize that you don't have the watch face installed and it will ask you to go and get it. Now that will essentially just open it up on your watch again and you go open and we're back and the watch face just selected over it's just a more of a notification to say hey you forgot to do it so you go through a couple of steps but the way of opening it up is to just swipe back to it excellent hopefully this video has helped and good luck with everything to do with your new smartwatch